so we are given a tree rooted at node 1 and the tree is also given in the form of an array where p of i denotes the parent of node i and 1 is the root so its parent is minus 1 and we are given that every node has a value a of i associated with it so we need to choose any node we can start with and after that we need to perform dfs so this statement after that you from a node you can go to any of its style node and we can we need to move on till we reach the leaf node so it is basically saying that you need to traverse dfs you, you need to traverse the, till the depth and every time you get a new node you write its value and we assume that integer sequence of the path okay and we are told that let's say b1 is your first node in the dfs then you would find this values and you need to find the maximum value maximum possible value of uh, this sequence so let's let's see one example so here we are given our node 1 node 2 and node 3 so the values associated are 1 2 and 3 respectively 1 2 and 3 so see, uh, the brute force way see you need to uh, you see you can start from any node you can start from any node it is told in the question that you can start from any node okay you can start from any node and then you can traverse dfs in a dfs fashion and then you can find the maximum value of this sequence b1 minus b2 plus b3 dot 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 and uh, yeah it uh, the last one being the bk or the kth node okay so let's say i start from one i start from node number one so my first value i come up with is one okay so here my uh, so i what i will do i will start from each node the brute force way is to start from every node and do the dfs and find the maximum value of this sequence but uh, the only concern is that how will you know that which node uh, we need to associate a positive value or a negative value right so the from the very first node see we can see that very first node is a positive value then the second is negative and it is an alternating sequence right so i can maintain one flag flag variable initialized with zero okay so if my flag is one then i would and uh, i would change my value to minus okay minus the node value else i would increment else it is positive only okay so the brute force way so this is a simple dfs equation but it is very important that how would you solve this okay the approach with, with, with you with which you can solve this see one two let's say there were more nodes okay there were more nodes four and five and the values associated are one two three here it is four and here it is five okay let's say you start from node number one node number one you start the dfs call okay from node number one you can either go to one uh, two or three let's say we visited two and let's say i then visited four okay so now see initially my flag was zero at this point flag was zero at this point i would whenever i call a dfs i would invert my flag why see i need an alternating sequence right the second node has a value negative associated with it right so uh, until and unless i maintain my, my invert my flag value i will not be able to find out that whether it whether i need to add it or subtract it from the final answer correct so again when i visited four i would invert my flag correct so now let's uh, see the values associated so since the values associated are one then since my flag is one the value associated with node two i would negate it okay so one minus two because the value associated is two then finally when i reach four i would increment four so what is my answer three right so this is my answer so i would maintain one answer variable initialize to the minimum right and then i would increment my i would update my answer value if i find any value greater than the minimum value right so i hope you are getting the approach see we will start from each node the brute force way i will solve this problem with two approaches the first one is the brute force and second one is the memoization memoization or dp right wherein you will store the values and uh, if, if if you are given the the tree trees of big size right then this will get time limit exceeded but as of now uh, the GFG problem is get, uh, getting brute force is also getting accepted but in some uh, in interviews because this is a very good problem and in interviews if you get that n is very big then you can use memoization to reduce the time complexity because the main reason the main reason for this is c generally dfs call time complexity is big o v plus c correct now let's say if my tree is skewed okay if my tree is skewed then the worst case complexity for dfs is big o of n right 
now the another reason is that i am starting from each node i am starting from each node and doing dfs traversal correct so each node and dfs traversal is costing big of n so my result would be big of n square okay now if n is very much greater then you would definitely get time limit exceeded why because in skew tree if i start dfs from each node the dfs traversal will definitely take big of n time correct because the tree is skewed means uh, it means that it is not balanced or it has not mm, uh, the exactly the same nodes as in the left subtree or in the right subtree right so it would take big of n time and each of the, uh, since you are traversing from each node the time overall time complexity would be big of n square right so so uh, the algorithm the brute force algorithm is a big of n square only right so let's first see the brute force algorithm why because it is getting accepted in gfg and it is very intuitive to understand how it works okay so let me take the previous example again 1 2 3 4 and 5 so what i said to you see you start dfs from each node you start dfs from each node and you up update the flags and the answer variable correct so let's say i started dfs from 1 then i went to 2 then i went to 4 so this is one of the dfs traversal now i can start from 1 and then i go to 3 this is also a dfs traversal okay then i can start from 1 i can go to 2 i can go to 5 so these three are the possible dfs traversals starting with one see only starting with one this are the these are the only possible dfs traversal other other than this you do not have any other okay so when i start from one i am calculating my answer okay i am i am starting so initially my flag would be zero why because the first first is positive then second is negative then third is positive and fourth is negative and so on right so even i mean the i mean alternating it is an alternating sequence right so when i call for one i would pass zero or when i call for any node initially i will pass zero so if i pass zero okay then i will check one's value so i am adding one okay now when i visit two so all of this you can do only when you reach the leaf node right so you will uh, start the dfs call from one then you go to two invert the flag so initially my flag was zero now it is one now again it is zero so when you reach the leaf node when you reach the leaf node you check whether my my if my flag is zero if my flag is zero then i i need not do anything then i need not do anything and i i would simply increment my answer to that uh, value or the value of the as value associated with that node okay otherwise when see when we return from the dfs traversal to 2 and then finally to 1 now when i reach 2 i see that my the value in my flag is 1 right if my value in my flag is 1 then the node value associated with node number 2 i would negate it simply negate it okay i would simply negate the node value and finally i would increment my answer with that okay node value okay once i see so, uh, explain you the code it would be very much understanding so very much intuitive and very much understanding okay so this is the approach see you started from 1 you traverse this now the next thing you can do is you can start from 2 the possible dfs traversal are this only 2 to 4 and 2 to 5 since this is a directed tree or i would say a directed graph you can consider 2 to 4 and 2 to 5 only right because 2 to 1 does not make any sense because 2 1 3 is 2 uh, 1 3 yeah you can take that but uh, the directed uh, probably we are told that pi is the parent of right we are told that pi is the parent of a uh, node i correct so assume that it is like this only so 2 to 4 and 2 to 5 and finally 3 4 and 5 are the leaf node leaf nodes definitely 3 4 and 5 so we not we did the dfs traversal would end in one step only and with flag being zero flag equal to zero okay and finally you would calculate your final answer okay so let me first so uh, see the time complexity associated with this big of n square okay now let me show you the uh, the accepted code which is uh, the brute force approach okay it is very easy and i have written it in the best possible way right so first i need to uh, make up the adjacency list or graph right so what i am doing graph of parent of i see i am making one edge from parent of i to the child of i okay now i am initializing one variable answer to the minimum possible value now i am starting from each node i have node numbers from 1 to n okay uh, be please be sure of that because i have no, uh, no node with zero value okay so i am starting with node number 1 i am calling the dfs from node number 1 okay now this dfs function will do all of his all of the task 
okay what it what task it will do again in the local variable in the local space it is initializing one variable answer to be minus e okay and for initially i would pass flag equal to 0 why i would pass flag equal to 0 because the first value because the first value associated is as a positive value right so if my flag if i would flag 0 means positive value right so i am calling my answer uh, i am calling dfs again and again from this node from this node i am calling the dfs to its child nodes okay and each time i am inverting the flag this is very important if you do not do that this then uh, you, you entire your entire problem uh, turns out that you are finding the sum of the nodes but in, if you uh, you need to invert the flag which is very important right because see when you go from 1 to 2 or 1 to 1 uh, uh, from a node to its child initially my flag is 0 then flag is 1 right because we need this sequence b1 minus b2 plus b3 for this for this um, alternating sequence we are inverting the flags okay so i am inverting my flag then what is a, a node value associated with my node okay so since the, my array my given array that is the value array is zero base indexing so i am doing i am finding out the value okay now see if my flag is true if my flag is one that means i need to invert my value right see initially for one i passed it zero now at two i am negating it right because i need b1 minus b2 so the value associated with two let's say it was four then i would Uh, change it to be minus four. See, the same thing I am doing. If my flag is set, then I am changing my value. And yeah, see this this step uh, this step is for the leaf nodes. Okay, so uh, when I reach the leaf node, my answer is still ma the my neg negative, right? So I am finally uh, I am returning the value associated with the node. Okay, now and if it is not the case, then I would return my value plus the answer which I got. See, if I if you are not getting this DFS call. you need to take one pen and paper and uh, sit down and understand the dfs how it works see first of all i am starting with one one calls to two calls four assume that assume that yeah now when you reach four i am seeing my flag see initially it was zero now it is one again it is zero flag is zero no need to do anything now initial my answer is still the negative one right my answer is still the negative minimum value in the negative now let's say the value associated with 4 was 1 um, assume that okay now so i would return 1 4 return 1 so this 4 is returning 1 by positive 1 positive 1 see it is very important to see that positive 1 why because flag is 0 it is returning positive 1 to 2 now at i am at 2 i am checking flag value what is flag flag is 1 now i am negating let's say the value associated with 2 was 5 i need to negate it right why because flag is flag is set to be 1 flag is set to be 1 so i am negating it but my now my but my answer variable is not minus 1 uh, the minimum value it is 1 right why see this uh, this is the right answer equal to max of answer we are updating answer once we uh, call the, that once the dfs call for a particular node is over right so my answer would have become 1 now answer is 1 right now i uh, this this condition will fail right this condition will only pass when we are at the leaf node now i would return value plus answer so what is my value minus 5 what is my what was my answer 1 it is equal to minus 4 so that is correct 2 is returning minus 4 to 1 okay now i am at 1 i am let's associated value was 6 now i am checking flag why i am seeing that yeah it is it needs to be positive right so finally i would return my node value which is 6 which is 6 and the answer which i got so 6 plus uh, minus 4 which is equal to 2 okay so this is the maximum value associated with node 1 when i traverse when i tra uh, when i call a dfs from 1 the maximum value which i can get is 2 yeah definitely you need to traverse this way also right so we need to check the values associated with this node also so but dfs will do all of your things in the right way i hope you are getting this okay so this is the brute force extreme brute force way wherein you start from each node do a dfs traversal and do everything okay now a very important thing to note is that see you can start from any node correct you can and when you start from any node the flag associated with it would be zero only right see as you uh, see this see this for loop every time i am passing zero as the initial value of flag correct so is there any way see uh, but uh, this would get time limit exceeded if n value is very huge right so this code uh, but in the gfg this is getting accepted i don't know why how 
but yeah it is okay because this problem needs a lot of understanding so yeah it is okay if it is uh, big of n square also so i will paste the code this code in the description definitely now let me uh, go with approach to approach to is very important for interviews because interview did definitely ask this to you and probably this question was asked in one of the google or interviews or fang interviews i am not sure for this so please pay attention to it now see each time i am starting a dfs call i am passing the flag to be zero right so what if i could store see 1 to 2 to 4 to 5 and to 3 okay now when i call dfs from 1 i am calling 2 i am calling 4 right so dfs of 2 dfs of 2 dfs of 2 would give the, uh, there are two possibilities for dfs of 2 2 to 4 or 2 to 5 now when uh, i have calculated dfs dfs of 2 right I'm, i mean i have calculated the answer for dfs of 2 or uh, let's say we have calculated the answer for df answer for 2 or answer for 2 is already calculated right while we return from 4 to 2 and then 2 to 1 the value or answer for 2 is already calculated right then now again when i call from 2 when i start from 2 or when i start from 1 let's say so 1 is calling 2 2 is calling 4 assume like this right now 2 is also calling 4 so when i when i did the traverse or when i did the dfs for 1 uh, the nodes node with one value the, i have already find out found out the value for 2 to 4 right now when i call for 2 again dfs of 2 i need not recalculate the value right because assume see this would make sense only if n value is very big or a tree is skewed see this is the case assume that this is the case okay now dfs of 1 is 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 to 5 to 6 correct now while i read 6 i am returning some value to 5 right so answer of 5 is already calculated answer of 5 is already calculated okay now 5 to 4 4 is already calculated 4 to 3 calculated 3 to 2 calculated 2 to 1 calculated so in my current approach what i am doing i am starting with 1 doing a dfs then i am starting with 2 and then again doing the same dfs see you do you notice any recursive or repetitive pattern repetitive pattern and when 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 you see a repetitive pattern the only uh, thing that comes to your help is dp remove uh, remember the past okay this is the thing so now when i call dfs of 2 again i am calculating all this because but i am already sure that 5 df answer of answer of 2 is already calculated while i was calculating for 1 right so why do i need to calculate it again because it is increasing my complexity too much right if my n is too much big then i am again i need to recalculate it again correct so this is not the right approach right so why can't why can't i store the values why can't i store the values when i calculate see when i calculate for 6 let me store the value dp of node and the flag associated whatever might be the flag associated let me store that value and if it is not calculated then only i will do the dfs if it is not calculated then only i will do the dfs for that node otherwise i need not otherwise i would directly need to return my answer correct so this is the i would say memoization solution memoization it would significantly reduce your time complexity it is very important okay now let's see the memoization code okay this is also very simple if you have, if you have done some good amount of dp problems or dfs problems then it would you will directly get it okay so the first approach is the same okay sorry for that yeah the first approach is the same you are taking my one graph okay you are inserting in the uh, inserting into adjacency list then you are taking one dp I mean, then you are taking one dp vector or a 2d 2d array and again you are initializing your answer to be uh, negative uh, the int min value right now you are calling the dfs call the flag value is always going to be zero right when you start from one the flag value any when you start from any node the flag value is already going to be zero right now i am checking see i am initializing my dp vector to be the integer minimum right so i am checking if my dp if if my node node and the corresponding flag is um, i mean is if it is equal to the integer minimum if it is equal to the integer minimum then only this uh, then i then only i need to do this process otherwise i would return my answer otherwise i, I do not need to do the dfs for that mode right it is already calculated again the uh, otherwise the otherwise otherwise the things remain the same i am again calling the dfs for child again calling the dfs inverting the nodes inverting the flag each time and then finally calculating my answer vector right and once we return while we return from the dfs call 
see you need to if you are if we are weak at memoization or dp or dfs then you need to take one pen and paper and try to debug it okay so how it works one is calling two two is calling five right now once we calculate the answer for five five would return its answer to two two would return its answer to one and one would finally return answer okay so this is how it works so while while i was returning from five i am storing its value Phi and what 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 its flag zero one and zero right what what its flag would be zero so I am C in by while returning or while while uh, returning from phi I am storing its value C this is very important this is storing uh, storing its value right so now now when you call the DFS from two but two to five is already calculated so you will directly return the return it from here right you need not calculate for phi again right so this is the case this is the advantage of uh, the DP or uh, memoization right. And finally, finally, you need to find the maximum answer associated with each node when you start with flag zero and DP of one of zero. See, the second one is the flag, the first one is the node, right? So uh, when you started from node one with value zero, what is the maximum value associated with it? The, uh, it would it would definitely get stored right while we uh, while we are doing the DFS, correct? So this is the same the same uh, logic, but just you are inserting one more uh, vector or I would say logic that is DP or memoization, right? A significantly significant reduce reduction in the time complexity yeah definitely at the cost of space <laughs> uh, and space would not be on n square because the second variable is only 0 or 1 right so it is of size 2 only so, uh, but time complexity is a, has a significant reduction and while you are in interview you can uh, solve this using both approaches and then definitely you will get shortlisted for any of the i mean i would i would say uh, because interview interviewer would be greatly impressed right if you solve this problem because this is a i mean uh, how how is it tagged yeah it is tagged medium but i i would say it, it requires a lot of logic and understanding of dfs and dp so yeah so yes friends so i i hope you have got this problem i would paste both of this code in the description and in case if you have any doubts comment it down i would definitely try to address you and uh, do not forget to subscribe to the channel it may, it matters a lot thank you for watching